Anyone in the house love the Lord? Anybody just come out to worship him today because he's a great God. Not for anything that he's done, but just for who he is. What an awesome, mighty God we serve. I love you, Lord, and I lift my voice to worship you, oh, my soul, my soul rejoice, take joy, my King, in what? You hear, let it be a sweet, sweet sound in your ear. I love you, Lord, and I lift my voice. I feel your presence in this place. 
thank you, Jesus. There's a consuming fire in this place. Can you feel his presence? I just bowed down here and said, thank you, Jesus. I just bowed down here and said, thank you, Jesus. You put food on my table and I thank you. Clothes on my back and I thank you.
watched over me all night long. Watched over me all night long. And we prayed you for it. Took care of our families. Made a way out of nowhere. Open doors for open doors. Gave each to trouble. Hey. Your name, Jesus. Praise your name. Oh, all over this place. All over this place. We're closed now. But sometimes people need to know what God has really done for us. I want people to know that His power is so. It's no act. When my flesh gets weak, he renews my strength. Oh, I dare you to get into his presence. I dare you. I dare you. I dare you to get into his presence. I dare you to, to just forget all about you. I dare you. I dare you to just say, Lord, just do something for me right now. I, I came out this afternoon. I need you to do something for me right now. That burden that you had, you don't have to take it back with you right now. Hey, Jesus, somebody's waiting for some trouble when you get back home. But let me tell you, God's got it. God can handle it. And God is going to do it. Not quite. Thank you, choir. Please stand with me if you can and follow along with the monitors as I read our scripture lesson for today, taken from the Old Testament. We have Deuteronomy 6, verses 4 through 9, and these words include verses 1, 2, and 3 that are not on the screen, but they are all the words of God given to the people of Israel by Moses as they prepared themselves to enter into the promised land. Beginning with verse 4, they read from the New King James, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength. And these words which I command you today shall be in your heart. You shall teach them diligently to your children and shall talk of them when you sit in your house when you walk by the way, when you lie down and when you rise up. You shall bind them as a sign on your hand and they shall be as frontless between your eyes. You shall write them on the doorpost of your house and your gates. And from the New Testament, we have a very familiar First Communion service scripture found in 1 Corinthians 11, verses 23 through 26, which also read from the New King James, for I received from the Lord that which I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus on the same night in which he was betrayed took bread, and when he had given thanks, he break it and said, take eat, this is my body which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same manner, he said, also took the cup and supper saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Thank you. You may be seated. Christian friends and church family, I thank my God for each of you, our Antioch family and visitors, and our friends who have joined with us in the house of the Lord via live stream today. And I especially thank my pastor in his absence, the Reverend Dr. Todd C. Davison, for entrusting me to stand in this holy space and bring you a word from the Lord today. As is a responsibility that I do not take lightly, I accept it humbly. And so, my brothers and my sisters, 
please bow with me in a word of prayer. Most holy and righteous Father, Lord God Almighty, once more and again your servant stands before you, Lord. We talked last night, we talked this morning, and Lord, right now, this servant is asking that you allow her to decrease and your Holy Spirit increase so that the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart will be acceptable, Lord God, in your sight. O oh Lord, my strength and my redeemer. In Jesus' mighty name I pray, amen. Now, from these two passages of scripture that comprise our scripture lesson, you should note that both involve a covenant with God. And the Lord has given me as a topic or point of departure, if you will, a title that truly touched me, that touched my heart as I began to read and study these passages. And that title, the choir has already taken, Lest I Forget. Amen? Lest I forget, the word lest, meaning for fear of, or fearful, or worried that I might forget. Oh, lest I forget. And notice now, I didn't say lest you forget, or lest we forget, but lest I forget. Lest I forget because I came to realize through my biblical readings and study, that our walk and our talk will be judged by God on an individual basis. Amen? So as I read and, and studied these scriptures, I began to see for myself what the Lord requires me to do in order to live in his will and bring glory to his holy name. Lest. I forget. And just like it touched me, perhaps just, just maybe, by the aid of God's Holy Spirit, it just might touch you too. Oh, lest I, me, you and we, oh, lest we forget. Amen? Well, what does it mean to forget? When we forget, we fail to hold something in our minds. And the forgetfulness could be innocent, blameworthy, or even sometimes useful in order to receive a peace of mind sometimes. Like as the Apostle Paul noted in Philippians 3, 13, forgetting those things which are left behind. And that's all well and good. Each of us has something in our lives that we choose to forget. But I stand before you today saying, lest I forget. Because there's something of great importance that I want to always remember. But in my humanness, I'm fearful that sometimes I might just forget. Oh, lest I forget. Now, I'm sure we've all heard somebody state at some point in time, you know that boy or girl would forget their head if it wasn't attached to their body. Well, we've all forgotten something. We've all forgotten something during our lifetime. And one thing in particular becomes more certain every day as some of us progress in age. And it is this that we do tend to forget more and more every day. Some of y'all know what I'm talking about. You start up or down the stairs to get something, and before you've even reached your destination, you're wondering, what did I come up here for? <laughs> happens all the time, and if it hasn't happened to you, you just keep on living. But I tell you, my friends, as a young person, I knew then the importance of remembering things. So many times I would put a note on my dresser mirror. I've got a test 
I've got an exam, got to do this for school. And then as I got older and I began to live on my own, you know, mama and daddy weren't paying the bills then. So I would make a note to myself, this bill is due here, this bill is due at that time. I didn't want to fall short and face the consequences of being late. Yes, there are consequences. And many of us have experienced during some time of our, our lives, no heat, no water, no phone, and no car, because we forgot. Oh, lest we forget. So now, how does this apply to our scripture lesson? Let me begin with a little background and a short history lesson. The Hebrew name for Deuteronomy is Elehad Barim, meaning these are the words, or simply words. But the Greek name for Deuteronomy, which was carried over into the European language, is Deuteronomium. It means second law book, or the second telling of the law. Now this is apropos because it acknowledges its ties with the book of Exodus, where the law occurs first for the ancestors of this current Hebrew generation. Now many of you know the Exodus story, the story of the Israelites' journey from Egypt to the land promised to them by God. Well, the book of Deuteronomy, it takes up the story of the Israelites after approximately 40 years in the desert. And Minister McKinney reminded us at Wednesday night Lenten service that it was because these 40 years lasted because of their disobedience. And you know, after 40 years in the desert, wandering aimlessly, many from the original group had died off. So Deuteronomy explains to us how Moses reminded this younger generation of Israelites of the covenant that they had made with God as they prepared to finally enter this promised land. And he does this in a series of very passionate speeches, or sermons, if you will. And in these sermons, Moses cautions the people to remain faithful to God in the midst of the pagan Canaanite culture that they were about to enter. Sounds like we're going through something like that right now. Listen to Moses. Moses now at 120 years of age, already 120. But you know, that's not so far-fetched anymore. My mother just turned 101. And we've got people 116. So Moses' 120 gives me a little hope. <laughs> but he knew he wouldn't get to the promised land. And in chapter 34 of Deuteronomy, we read of Moses' death. So in essence, Deuteronomy is Moses' last will and testament. Last will and testament to the people of Israel, and within that will, Moses was challenging them, challenging them to remain faithful, and he reminded them of their past history, and he was pointing them towards their future of blessings or curses, depending on their obedience or disobedience to God's word. Oh, lest they forget. Now, from a theological perspective, it's difficult to overestimate the value of the book of Deuteronomy. Judaism, as it exists today, is a product of this book. And Christianity developed its self-understanding by staying in tune 
with the theological perspectives that are at the very heart of this great book. My friends, Deuteronomy is not only one of the most important books of the Bible, but it is also one of the most quoted books throughout the New Testament. I'm gonna come back to that statement later. But for now, let's go back to our Deuteronomy 6 scripture lesson. And when you get home, read for yourselves verses one, two, and three. Because in the first verse, we find a message to those who teach. We, like Moses, are God's instruments. And we are to teach only God's statutes and judgments. No more, no less. The second verse is a message to those who hear or are being taught. Listen to me, Sunday school. Lest you go about doing as you will and not God's will. Scripture tells us that the fear of God is the most powerful principle of obedience. It aids us in our endeavors to enjoy and possibly receive an extension of years to our life on this side of Jordan. The fear and holiness, it, it includes a recognition of awe of God's great holiness, love for him, and above all, a submission to his holy will. My friends, the fear of God should, should, should lead us to a sense of wonder, a sense of commitment to worship, and a sense of delight in just knowing God. So then the third verse tells us that if we listen and adhere to what we're taught biblically, we will prosper and grow, both religiously and righteously. Because the milk and honey, you see, which are indications of fruitfulness and blessings in this life, will not cease as long as we trust and obey. Didn't we hear that earlier? Trust and obey God. Now don't get it twisted. I'm not preaching prosperity gospel here. I'm preaching righteous living. Righteous living as a lifestyle in not my sight, but in the sight of God. According to his biblical truths, lest we forget. Now, as we move into verses four through nine, I want to give you our contemporary challenge for today, and it is this. In today's society, can we find individual contemporary relevance in this portion of scripture? In today's society, where families rarely admonish a child like it was done old school. Some of y'all know what I'm talking about. Oh, we no longer train up a child, as Proverbs 22, 6 admonishes us to do. And let me just say to you young people who are here today, if you're not already, start to follow the dictates of Ecclesiastes 12, 1. And remember now, thy creator, in the days of your youth, before the difficult days come. And what's so interesting about that is that these days, with all the manner of diseases, they don't have to wait to get old. The hospital is full of young people. The grave site is full of young graves. Remember now, thy creator, oh, lest you forget. Saints, like tell me in today's society, where families rarely sit together for dinner. They rarely discuss God's word as it pertains to the family unit. Oh, they rarely pray together, so they rarely stay together. You know the divorce rate. Tell me, can we in this society of Google, Facebook, tweets, YouTube, and text messages, can we find specific individual contemporary relevance in this portion of scripture, Deuteronomy 6, 4 to 9? 
My friends, these particular verses have been known in Jewish tradition for centuries as the Shema. They contain the fundamental truth of Israel's religion. And to this day, they are recited as a part of their daily prayer. Israel's obedience was to arise from a relationship based upon love. And who is that? God. Amen? So we note here, verse 5 is key. It reads, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your strength. And it's key because this verse is also considered by Jesus in Matthew 22, 37 to be the first and greatest of the commandments. The heart, the heart, it was considered the seat of the mind and your will. And when Jesus quotes this passage, which can also be found in the books of Mark, Mark 12, 30, and Luke 10, 27, he adds, Jesus adds the word mind. And that was to probably emphasize understanding. Because remember now, we're told in Proverbs 4, 7, that in all you're getting, in all you're getting, get understanding. Amen? You know, that would have certainly helped the Pharisees and Sadducees. Some of you Bible scholars know what I'm talking about. And you know, my friends, in Matthew 4, 1 through 11, our Lord and Savior, he defeated Satan in the wilderness by quoting Deuteronomy three times during his encounter. When you get home, read for yourself. Deuteronomy 8, 3. Deuteronomy 6, 16. Deuteronomy 6, 13. Now at some point, the Hebrews started putting this passage along with several other chapters into leather cubes on straps, and they bound them on their left hand and on their foreheads during morning prayer. They placed them in small little metal or glass cases and fixed them to the right-hand doorpost of each of their homes. You see, in this way, they displayed a literal fulfillment of the command to be a people of the commandments. In other words, the Hebrews cultivated an undivided devotion with wholehearted commitment to God. Sounds difficult to do, doesn't it, for us today? But it can be done. So now knowing this, my brothers and sisters, I ask again, can we find specific individual contemporary relevance in these verses? Well, the answer, and I heard somebody say it, it's yes. Oh, yes, we can. Because you see, my friends, here is where the Old Testament, Deuteronomy, meets up with the New Testament. 1 Corinthians 11, 23 and 26, we've already read it. Saints, we're talking about Holy Communion. The second of two ordinances in the Baptist church, the first being baptism. But here at Antioch, each first Sunday, you and I, as a body of Baptist believers, after having shared the reading of our Baptist church covenant, you know the covenant that Pastor Davidson's been breaking down for us in Bible study? Oh, some of y'all didn't know that because you didn't come. <laughs> but he's been breaking it down for us over the past several weeks. Well, after reading that together and praying, we partake of the symbols of his broken body and shed blood as an act of obedience and our unity with our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. You know, the whys and wherefores of this scripture are right here. Christ himself tells us, do this in remembrance of me. And he said, as often as you do it, 
you proclaim my death until I come again. He is coming back. Lest we forget. My friends, lest we forget that God, through his son Jesus Christ, he still calls his people today. He calls us to pursue him with all, not a little piece, not your leftovers. With all your heart, soul, and mind. Because in that pursuit, we will find life and a multitude of blessings. Malachi tells us we won't even have room to receive them. But I'm here to tell you this morning that it requires something. And Deuteronomy 10, 12, and 13 gives us the answer. For they state in part that we are to fear the Lord God, walk in his way, love him, serve the Lord your God with, again, not a little portion, but all your heart, with all your soul, and keep his commandments and his statutes. Why? For your good, your good and mine. Because you see, we, as a contemporary community of believers, we must remember that God's high expectations of his people flow out of his own holy nature. God tells us in the book of Exodus 19 and Leviticus 20, you shall be to me a kingdom of priests and a holy nation. He said, sanctify yourselves therefore and be holy for I am the Lord your God. Oh, lest we forget, lest we forget that God is always watching. And he's not just watching Sally and Jim. He watching you too. Me too. Humble. Humble is the way to walk before God, lest we forget. And you know, as I reflect upon my own Christian journey during this Lenten season, I'll ask you to please bear with me just a moment and allow me to share two personal situations that I cannot, I must not forget. The first situation took place in my mid to upper 20s. And I was working for a Fortune 500 corporation. The job had become all-consuming and I didn't notice at the time, but I wasn't attending church as I had regularly done in the past. The job, the job, the job. Well, the powers to be asked me to make a presentation before what we called back then the big wigs, the VIPs, the very important people. And now to me, that meant that I not only had to have solid presentation, but I also had to have the look. So I went out and I scoured and I found three piece jacket, vest, skirt, power suit, canary yellow, now, you got to remember, this was the 70s. <laughs> Women were just being allowed to dress business fine. So I had to have the look. But that morning of the presentation, when I'm in my power suit, I know I'm looking good. I, and I got this. I got this. And I go to... I'm going down the steps. I'm like, wait a minute. I got to take one more look. <laughs> so I look in the mirror, and down I went, plummeted right down them stairs, hit the landing, and I just lay there. 
And all of a sudden, I started laughing. But then something happened, and I started praying. Because I thank God for not letting me break something or kill myself. <laughs> Amen? <laughs> and you know, uh, what I began to realize was that in the midst of making a worldly living, in the midst of trying to play the world's game, I have forgotten to remember God. Oh, lest I forget. And so after coming to that realization, I have since tried every day to handle my work and church life with as much humility as I humanly can. Oh, lest I forget those stairs and what could have happened. Amen? <laughs> now, the second story, and I'm going to make it brief. Some of you know about my bout with colon cancer. Well, my husband, Dr. Vincent Holland, sitting back there, who stayed with me every step of the way during that time, can truly testify to you that I should have been dead and gone. All right? But here I stand. Here I stand before you today. But you know what? Lest I should forget how the Lord has brought me from the brink of death more than once. Amen. He allowed. Thank you. God bless. What he has done is allowed the residual effects of the chemo to create an unusually painful effect in both my feet, lest I forget. They cramp up on me sometimes, and it's difficult for me to wear regular high heel shoes, which I used to love. Got a zillion of them. Can't wear them. But sometimes, like today, I wear short, for short periods of time a wedge-like shoe. And, and don't think I'm not waiting to get out of them. <laughs> Amen? <laughs> but I tell you, God is good, saints. He's good to those who love him and who truly try to keep his commandments. Some of y'all know. You can testify to that. You know he is. Because what's so good about this story is that the doctors had warned me it would happen, but they said it was going to happen to my hands. And you see how good God is? I needed my hands more than my feet to do my work. So God was merciful to me. He considered his servant, considered the fact that those hands at the time, and even now, more, much more important than these so feet. So as I come to my close, I want you to remember that as we continue to receive God's redeeming grace. We can look with hope to his promised future for you and I with Christ Jesus. Oh, lest we forget that we're redeemed and as children of God, he showers us with his abundant grace every day. Oh, grace. Grace received in spite of what we may have deserved. My friends, let us pay attention to God's instruction. Let us renew our commitment to remain holy and to love, honor, serve, and hold on firmly only to the Lord our God, knowing and believing that God is committed to bringing his people to maturity so that we can and will indeed do those greater works that Pastor Davidson so passionately teaches and preaches to us. From the words of our Lord and Savior in John 14, 12, greater works toward kingdom building for Christ. And so it's important to remember that as we take the walk of faith that we just heard about earlier, God has promised in Philippians 1, 6 to walk with us each and every step of the way. And you know, somebody once said that great trials are often necessary 
to prepare you and I for great responsibilities. Well, Moses, whose name means drawn out, because Pharaoh's daughter drew him out of the water, Moses felt the responsibility to draw the nation of Israel out of the Egyptian bondage. And like Moses, because of the relief I received from the Lord's rescue and his grace and mercy that I've received over the years, I feel a deep responsibility to share the love of Christ with others. Because you see, I realize that as a Christian, a follower of Jesus Christ, I've got to have something more on my shoulders than a chip. Amen? Lest I forget. It was not the nails that held our Lord and Savior to the cross. It was his unfathomable love for you and me. And I tell you, we can't even imagine that kind of love. It's too deep for our little human brains to wrap around. You and I, no matter how hard we might try, will never have in our humanity the depth of love our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ had. Oh, lest we forget Gethsemane. Oh, lest we forget his agony. I don't know about you, but I'm going to keep it in my mind's eye. How they whipped our bread of life all night long. All night long, pressed the crown of thorns against his precious brow. Lest I forget that they took him up Golgotha's hill called Calvary. Stretched him wide. Our Lord and Savior had tears in his eyes, but they weren't for him. You see, he could have come down. He had all power. He could have come down and saved himself. But he stayed on that old rugged cross. And lest I forget, they pierced him in his side. And all the living, living water just ran on down. Saints, why did the light of the world endure this pain and suffering? I tell you, because he being the good shepherd that he was, he loved and loves you and me. And you, and you, and you, and you, and you. Amen? Amen. No matter how unworthy we deem ourselves to be. But praise God, that wouldn't end. Wasn't the end of the story. Lest I forget that he died on that lonely, awful Friday. But the good shepherd, the good shepherd, being the door who opens the way for you and me, stopped downstairs on Saturday. All right, he stopped downstairs and he brought blessed assurance to sinners like you and me. And some of them probably weren't even as bad as some of us. All right? But he brought them blessed assurance. And then on that blessed, wonderful third day, the resurrection and life, he rose. Amen? Lest I forget, he rose early, y'all, telling old death, hey, where your sting? Oh, death. Way of victory. Yeah. I'm standing here. I've risen. He rose. Yeah. Lest we forget that he rose for you and he rose for me. Oh, lest we forget. That's God's message for us today. Amen. Yeah.